Welcome to this interactive demo of the Pieces Copilot Streamlit bot. This project was built with the help of the Pieces OS Python SDK and Streamlit. Now, before we begin, let's also understand what Streamlit is. So, Streamlit is an open source framework in Python that allows you to create very aesthetic and visually pleasing web applications without having any sort of front end experience required. And all of this written in Python. So whether you have a machine learning application or a data science app, you can very easily build these visually pleasing applications and share it with others very easily as well. Now, Streamlit has a lot of different examples, even for generative AI or LLM based applications. So whether you want to build a LLM based chatbot or a file Q&A section or even search something with LangChain, you get front end components that are, of course, written in Python that you can leverage very easily. And that's what we have actually done for our pieces copilot streamlit bot as well. We have used these stream, uh, these front end components provided by streamlit in order to create a really simple and intuitive chatbot powered by pieces OS. So let's first take a look at the product demo and then we'll dive deeper into the code. So over here you can see that we have two main uh, things happening over here. A, we allow you to choose between the different types of models. So of course, as we know that pieces OS has support for both offline and online models. So here we have listed all of the different online models that are sub currently supported. So these include CPT, Gemini, Palm based models. And of course, you can also choose your downloaded local models such as Llama 2, Mistral and so on and so forth. So in this case, first we'll just go ahead and choose, let's say the GPT-4 preview chat model. And of course, once you have set this model, this model will be used to interact and send any queries sent by the user and you'll get a response from that particular model. Now over here, we can ask it a question so we can give it a prompt. So let's say I'll ask it a simple question, write a simple Python implementation of invoking a new web socket. Let's see if it can give us the response. So it starts to give it a response by sharing that, yes, we can use the WebSockets library in Python, and it gives us a basic example of a WebSocket client that connects to the WebSocket server. So over here, it looks pretty good. And then it also tells us that this particular web WebSocket server will start to run on localhost 8765. Now let's go ahead and probably ask it a separate question, a follow-up question that how do we close this web socket connection once it has been established and can you provide the code sample we are asking it a follow-up question over here and let's see what response does it give us so it says that to close a web socket connection in python you can use the web sockets library but specifically, you want to use the close method in order to close that web socket connection that you initialized. So that works pretty good. And it gives you a detailed response with a code sample that you can actually copy and paste for your own solution. So it gives us, in fact, like multiple methods, whether you're using it for the server side and also, of course, for the client side as well. Now I can go ahead and copy this code and use it anywhere I want. Now, of course, I can also choose between the different type of models as I've covered earlier. So let's say if I want to use one of the latest models, that is the Gemini chat model, I can probably ask it a question, who built you? Just to see whether it actually is able to take a look at the new model that I've selected. And as it says that it's a large language model trained by Google, which is accurate because the current model that we have chosen is the Gemini chat model. So that's a quick demonstration of the project itself. Now let's also dive deeper into the implementation with the help of the code. All right, so let's dive deeper into the code implementation. Now, before that, if you wish to actually run this project locally, just head over to the open source repository for this project under the pieces app organization. Uh, so the repository title is pieces copilot stream that example. So you can go ahead and fork and clone this repository as you want. And then you'll need to install the necessary dependencies. And then you can run the app using streamlet run pieces hyphen bot dot py. Now let's also understand the architecture of our app. So the main streamlit code itself that helps us to render the web UI is under the pieces hyphen bot dot py. And all of the communication with the pieces OS with the help of WebSockets happens. And that particular logic is there inside the API directory under the pieces hyphen ws dot py, where we have initialized and defined our WebSocket connection. 
So let's understand the code that we have inside the pieces hyphen bot. So of course we import the main uh, libraries over here, which is the streamlet and the pieces OS client. We initialize our variables over here. Now with any project that you build with pieces OS uh, in Python or in other languages as well, you have to initialize the API client globally where you first set the configuration for where your host is. And locally, uh, the pieces OS runs on localhost 1000 in the background of your application. And then you define the API client and the API instance. Now, this particular section of the code is where we have the ability to choose between the different types of models, whether they are the cloud-based models or the downloadable models. And you need to specifically use the models underscore snapshot endpoint that allows you to list all of the different models that we have. Now, in this case, we have chosen the default model to be the GBT 3.5 TurboTrack model. But of course, you can choose and pick whatever you want to keep as your default model. And over here, of course, we list down all the list of different model names. Now in the next section, that's where we have now started to find our Streamlit UI. That is the visual components that you see in the application. So in this case, uh, we have set the title of our UI as uh, pieces copilot Streamlit bot. And just to kind of show you this in action, let's also just run the project side by side. So of course, the first thing that you saw inside of uh, the particular application as we wait for it to run is uh, the title which is defined using the streamlit.title. Then we have defined uh, a URL, uh, of course, is the URL for the logo of pieces that you see over here. And then of course, um, we have this particular UI section that allows you to uh, list down all the different models that we got from the models underscore snapshot endpoint. And we have listed down the dropdown and the option contains all the list of the different models that you can pick and choose. So once you go ahead and select that particular model, that is what will be the model ID that will be passed to the WebSocket connection when you are using the QGPT stream endpoint to actually get the result based on the query that you send to the pieces OS. Now, once we have gone ahead and defined which particular type of model you want to use, now we are not having, we have not really implemented an entire like history of different uh, conversations that we've had with pieces OS for now in this example, but we are actually using the chat history capability that's provided to us by default from Streamlit. So in this case, whenever you're asking any question and the response that you're generating, there's a list that is maintained by Streamlit and we are just pushing those uh, questions and the responses to this Streamlit list. And that is what is actually then getting rendered on the, uh, on the UI. So we have the two different uh, types of assistants. So one is the assistant that is asking the question. And then of course the user is uh, going to be then delivering the content. So that is why you'll see that there's a role of an assistant that is rendering the response and the user is responsible for asking the query or sending the query. So in this case, like we start by adding just ask uh, any type of question uh, to the pieces copilot. So that is the first message that, that we also then push to the messages uh, list over here. And then of course we give the user the capability to then enter a question that they want to ask to pieces copilot. So that is what is happening over here where we get the query that the user wants to send by using the st.chat input. Now, of course, once the user has asked that particular question, we go ahead and call this function, which is the pieces copilot function. And we send in that query, the user response, the user input that has been given. And then uh, this is where we will now basically start to initialize the WebSocket connection to pieces OS. And in this, you can see that we have this uh, method called as the message generator where we send the model ID, because of course we need to define what type of model we are going to be using and the corresponding query, uh, which is of course the input uh, that has been given by the user. And this will initialize a new socket connection. So we'll initialize a new socket connection and then we'll use the QGPD stream to send that particular question with the query and the model ID to, uh, to the actual relevant copilot. And then it will render a response. So how does that implementation look like on the WebSocket front? So of course, initially we have just defined the WebSocket URL, which is the low closed 1000 QGPD stream. So this is where we'll be actually sending our question. So the initial code is just uh, a boilerplate code to set our WebSocket connection. Uh, so over here, we define like when to open it, how to close it, and then to initialize the first WebSocket connection whenever you ask the question. So that is why the main question that we are basically going to be focusing on over here is um, that initially when we send 
the question uh, to the WebSocket connections so using the QGPT endpoint, you see over here the message, and this is an object that contains the query. So the query is what the user input has been given, and then of course the model ID as well. Now, of course, if you want to add some context to it, like let's say some so sort of like files or folders, you can add that in the relevant section, but right now we're keeping it empty. So for us right now, the only focus is the actual query and the model ID that we are passing to the response. And as soon as we send this particular question, right, uh, we invoke the method over here, which is the on message uh, function that uses uh, the QGPT stream output uh, endpoint. And that of course uh, is getting the message body. So that includes the, uh, you know, the model ID and the actual uh, query that is being sent. And then you get a response and then we go ahead and actually stream that particular response with the help of our, uh, with, the, with the help of our copilot. So for example, if I'm asking a question, hello, write a Python program to do to plus two. So as soon as I go ahead and do this, like it initializes the response from the copilot. So it initializes a new copilot connection, which you can see over here, uh, which you have mentioned in the logs where we have the WebSocket connection opened. And then it starts to stream that response by first connecting to the WebSocket. And then by using the send message function, then we call the on message that actually helps us to generate the response from the copilot. Uh, from the QGPT stream output, and then we render that particular response. And then once the response actually gets generated, that's what we are also then getting over here in our main streamlit application. We just simply go ahead and append it. And we say that the response, because of course it's coming from the uh, chat assistant. So we append it for the, uh, from the role of the chat assistant. And that is why you see that, you know, that's how we are able to get the response from the chat. So this way, all the user queries are under the role of the user and all the responses from the assistant are under the role of the assistant. And this is a quick example around how we are able to leverage the QGPT endpoints to send in a user query by using the on message function that's been defined. And then we use uh, the QGPT stream output to render the response via stream. And that's why you see that how we uh, render the response via stream. And that is what we then put into the list under the assistant and we are able to get the response. But of course, like this is a very simple implementation. Now you could dive a lot deeper into uh, implementing additional functionalities such as being able to add context. So you could it had in functionality where you can give certain files and folders and ask more detailed questions to the pieces OS and get further defined, well-defined answers because you're also setting the context like you see in any of our other SDKs um, or even like the VS Code extension or the different extensions that have this functionality. We're looking forward to seeing what you can build as well with the help of the Python OS uh, SDK. And we are really, really excited to showcase many of these more technical demonstrations around how we implement different types of projects using our pieces OS extension. Thank you so much.